<laughs> All right, so we're going to McDonald's. My old stumping ground. Very uncomfortable. But I'm trying to embrace it. Everybody ain't sprinting, but I'm sprinting. Trek chose me, I didn't choose you. <laughs> I really feel like you. Like, I'm like, girl, you are the Olympian. At this point, we need to go get a medal. Today, y'all, we have some type of drill over here with these like green little hurdles. It's something up to no good because Coach Peterson is like very excited about it. And he said I need to be brave. It's an easy drill. Mm -hmm. It takes bravery. It takes what? Oh, I got bravery. I got, I got courage. And I got some looks. We have, we're doing some approaches today. We're really working on my last steps to the board. So I'm super excited to get on the runway. Me being a speed jumper, we have some 120s to do. And y'all, you're probably gonna see me die, but I'm excited. I only have two, so I gotta go big or go home because this is my last day of training this week. Okay. I just don't cook, I have dinner. my- What you want, what you want for your birthday? What you want for your birthday? Okay, just do you some, some, some chicken wings, some chicken wings, you know. It's about to late. It ain't too late. That's what I'm saying. It ain't too late. The grill has been lit. Like, where's the grill at? It ain't too late. I didn't even get a happy birthday too. Yes, you did. I'm not getting up. Yes, I did. You know what my birthday was. Your birthday? No, it was in January or February. January. It has to be January. No, it's in July. See? Get out of my face. Did I not say it had McCain yet? Did I not say it had McCain yet? I was like, I don't remember telling Quincy to have a birthday. And that's the young bad girls do it well going to essentially just be you working on running over the last two and staying tall. Okay. I'll explain it to you. you okay. That means I'm just going so fast. Your left foot is going to show up. This isn't a jump. This is no setup. Just basically drive your knees and step right over it. So I need to go into it hard. You need to get after it. I'm about to see this about to be ugly. The video helped. I'm a visual one. So I'm telling me it goes in one ear. It don't even go in the ear. So I think I did that one correct. What we're about to see. Let's go. I want you getting after this a little. Okay? Come on. Push it. Now you felt that last one. I think I can be a hurdler now. I don't remember the Olympic record. Dandy, what's the world record? I know I can go 12 0. <laughs> Go take that you just had on those last two damn hurdles down there and, and put it right it. here. Yes. Okay, the same thing you did over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. You were not normal Q patients. The okay. Six. Okay. That's why you didn't like it. Okay. And part of what we were doing over there is just going as fast as you can. So I put you in that rhythm a little bit. I get that. Go be Q the first six. One, two, three. Be patient, Q. How are we living over here? <sighs> you know, he's kicking my ass right now. Oh, can I curse? I'm sorry. Well, okay, he's so. kicking my butt right now. Um, he said to be brave, and I thought I was pretty brave. You could at least wash my water bottle. How do you know I didn't wash it? Because I smelled this smell like peanut butter. Tiki water. <laughs> Wait, what? Why are you water bottle smelling peanut I don't know. You tell me. I'm, ki I'm kidding. But right now, I am very, very uncomfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. But I'm trying to embrace it. Because insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So I know I have to do something different. You like that one? Six. Seven. You need to be spring. Y'all need to be spring. Y'all just get out the easy way. Everybody, everybody ain't spring, but I'm springing. We wanted all to line up. Yeah, that is true. If yeah. we got one thing today that lined up, then today was very successful. Yeah, and just build from that. Yes, yeah. and know that we can take that puzzle piece and put it in the puzzle when it's yeah. time. We'll add the puzzle piece to the wickets next week. Let's not overcomplicate okay. and try and do it all at once. Okay, thank you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Today we got better. Today we got better. 1% better. That's all that matters. Get 1% better. I'm on you. I'm checking the stock market. You know, it look, it's looking green green and red. <laughs> it look, it's looking good. Look, oh. <laughs> it's, actually, it's looking really good. It's really me on social media. <laughs> Practice today really 
Yeah, I mean, mentally, it was a great day, but I'm trying to get up out of here now. In and out. Look, call me Auntie Q. Auntie Q be trying to get up. Auntie Q get tired. Uh -huh, I got three more sets of this. Oh, child. Look, it's a, it's a lady or what? Uh-uh, no, just tell me next year. Tell me next year. Tell me next year. It's already gone. Tell me, no, just tell me next year. Tell me next year. You be quiet. <laughs> it's not lightweight. I tried to razzle that a little bit today. <laughs> And look, looking up auditions, because <laughs> I have this feeling that I should be in LA, New York, on some movie screen. I don't know why. But like, on The Bachelor, I just think I'll be in like, The Rose. Like, but then I don't know. Because on The Bachelor, like, they be falling in love too quick. They're, you know, like, the first day, uh, oh my gosh, I love him already. I'm like, now, girl, you don't love him. <laughs> and so they won't probably like me on the show. I wish I could be on something like a singing show, like a voice, but I can't sing. And America's Got Talent. Outside of track, I don't really know what other talent. <laughs> What's that show? The um. Oh, they actually reached out to me. Really? Yes. Really? Baby, I can't survive. <laughs> One, I can't swim. Yeah, Two, uh, you think I want to survive in the wilderness <laughs> with mosquitoes? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where you take a shower? I know my hair. Oh my god. And then you have to like pick up chickens and get stuff off the boat and put it on like the wrap. You think I'm about to pick up some live chickens? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> it's out there? Oh gosh. Did you park your car out there? Huh? Did you no, park your car? Not. Where's your car at? Hey, it should be fine, right? Oh, you're by the track? Yeah. Oh no, that's just people that are parked like right outside here. Oh. Make sure you get that. <laughs> if I'm not cool, you sure? Where's 40 kg? I don't know kilometers. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't know kilograms. <laughs> that's how you know. Literally. Right when I step out this uh, weight room, my vacation yeah. starts. <laughs> Trek chose me, I didn't choose Trek. <laughs> I have an alter ego. It says I have my blonde hand. Call me Marilyn. <laughs> trying to get me strong. Strong, strong. Come on, Q. You got it. It's a lot. I really think it's like a 24-hour job being an athlete. Like being a professional athlete, is, it requires a lot. And I definitely feel like people need to understand that more. Cause I just think like, oh, you just practice. That's it. We see how long practice is. Just think, imagine working hard for years and not making it. Like, Lord, no. I'm so glad I made the Olympics. <laughs> I really feel like you, like I'm like, girl, you're already Olympian. At this point, we need to go get a medal. So I think this year and next year for the Olympics, I feel like I'll be calm, way more calmer, but knowing like, girl, honey, you already did it before, just do it again. Cause I feel like world champs, it's like, I've made a lot of world championship team, but the Olympic team is still big, but it does get you nervous because it's like, that's like a big flex to make, be Olympian, but be a two-time Olympian, it's like, bad to bad. You know, it's like, uh. So they was like, I'm a one-hit wander, blah, 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 blah. Now what, I'm a two-hit wander? I feel like everyone's gonna bring it. But no one's safe. No one's safe for the Olympic trials. You have Olympic champions that didn't make the team. That's just the crazy part with America. In another country, you know, you already got the standard, you're going. Yeah. With us, nobody's safe. So it's like, it doesn't matter if you're the world record holder, you're number one in the world. It doesn't matter what you did at the prelims. You could have broke the world record the day before. But what are you gonna do on the finals day? Like the final day, what are you gonna do? And I think like it brings out another beast in the person. And I love that. Like, so what? You broke the world record yesterday. You gotta come do it today. What you gonna do today? We are done. We did it. It's 3.09. I'm past lunchtime. <laughs> Already. We go for lunch. What? McDonald's? Look. <laughs> A medium fry and a caramel sundae. And can that fry be no salt, please? Okay. They'll make it fresh. I remember I used to get calls all the time. I mean, like the college coaches would call me, like trying to recruit me, and I'm like, I'm at work right now. Put the phone down, and I'll be just taking orders. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta know y'all too now. I used to work at McDonald's uh, when I was younger and 16, and so I went to the Olympics, and so it's like, you know, the journey from like working at McDonald's and going to the Olympics. Hello, I got you. Look, I, lo I love it. <laughs> no, thank you. 
No, no, it's fun. Okay. This is me. I'll follow you back. I'll follow you back. Yes. Okay, this is yes. I see I'm getting my Sunday, so the ice cream machine working. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen. Listen. Listen, it's just really memories because I remember working there not knowing that the skills that I was learning at McDonald's would prepare me to make an Olympic team and to just really achieve my goals in life. It's, it's like dealing with people, working fast food is challenging. Thank you so much, y'all have a great, thank you. Nice meeting you, thank you. No, we got you. Thank you, they're so sweet. And before I go in that, y'all, this is the key. Oh my gosh, let's just eat one. Oh my God, look how mm, fresh. But it's what you do. A fry and you dip it. And you care what I'm saying? It's so good. Mm. I used to be that little girl in there. Like working, you know, proud to get a little small check every two weeks just to provide for my family. Not knowing what it was preparing me for. When I made my Olympic team, I didn't think anything of it when I posted that tweet. It was like started the McDonald's and went to the Olympics. And I realized like I didn't have the normal traditional high school life. And that's okay. Like, yeah, I had to work and I was balancing a lot, but now I, I'm ready for anything. And I definitely like how my story was picked up. And when it comes to I feel like track and field, like us athletes, like we all have a story. We all have a story. Like everyone has a story. And it's just like I feel like in track and field, they need to, we need to work better at sharing our story to the world. Because I really think we can connect to the world on so many levels instead of people just tuning in and watching track me. But if you know a story of like how they got to this track me and you know what we face in the sport, like a lot of people don't have contracts. I currently do not have a contract. I'm one Olympian. I finished my last season the number one American lone jumper, number one American lone jumper, and number four in the world. I placed fourth at the world championships by one centimeter. I've made countless USA teams. I've won NACAT, I've made finals, I've done it all. To not have a contract, I've jumped seven meters, I've jumped six nine, you know, I've done it all. But with the sport, in my field event, is not very a premier event. And so it's just like, well, if you win the Olympics, we may consider paying you. And just to think about that, like, you already went to the Olympics, you're the top girl in America, top in the world, and it's like, that's not enough. We're not getting paid what we deserve with our talents. And a lot of athletes have to have a job. They get a job. And, you know, I have my degree in elementary education, so I tutor, um, I do speaking engagements, and I do a lot of social media, like connecting with brands and collaborating. And I love how a lot of us athletes now are stepping out of, like, the traditional brand. Sharing our story more as track athletes will really help, and having the right people to share our story and, you know, getting, like, exposed to the social media. Because I think one simple thing is, like, once, like, we're running and we're competing, when they introduce us, a simple thing that can happen is put our Instagram at just right there. When they say Quinisha Burst, you can put my Instagram, Q underscore Burst. Let whoever's watching go follow me. And then they see my page. Then I'm getting more followers. They're going to be engaging. Like, now they feel they're a part of the, like my journey. That comes with getting paid more on social media. Like, it's so much more. Like, if the shoe companies don't want to pay us, there's other ways you can get paid for the sport. Because people are intrigued with our story. They're intrigued what we do. And I just feel like we need the platform to get it out there. Because if you line it up, like nine athletes line up on the run, um, on the runway or on the track to race, you don't know anything about them. But imagine if, hey, I remember Q. She's the one girl that went to, she worked at McDonald's. Oh, and she faced all the adversity. Oh, and now she's at the trials and she's in the finals. Man, I hope she makes it. They're gonna be cheering. And I know it's already challenging to watch track and field now because there's so many subscriptions that you have to like pay for, it's like they're going to be more willing to pay for it because they feel connected to the athlete. They feel like they've been on that journey with the athlete. And I definitely think we, every athlete have a story. Someone's out there waiting they can connect with our story. And don't think that our story like can't connect with others because it can. I didn't think my McDonald's story would connect with a lot of people, but it did. It's so many opportunities, but it starts with putting our story out there. Because you can't expect people to know what we do if it's already hard for them to watch the sport if you didn't know anything. If I didn't know anything about track, I would not, I would not be like, man, where's the Diamond League or where's the, when's the USA Trials? I wouldn't know anything. But you know what people are going to look for? I remember that athlete. I remember her story and 
I want to follow her, and I know she has this big competition coming up, and I got to go subscribe to this channel. I'm going to do that because I want to watch her because I want to see her be great and be successful. And even when you, if you don't make the team, how do you mentally prepare to bounce back from that? Because everyone's not going to win. And I think if we really touch on how crazy it is, like how, how intense it is with our training, that we are, like America's the hardest team to make, and we all come together in only three spots. There is so many people there. And it's not that they're bad. It's great athletes that come in only three spots available, only three spots on that day. You know how exciting that is to watch that? Like, I just see it like, wow. Like, people need to be betting on races too. Like, I don't know. I feel like people bet on basketball games. They bet on football games. Track and field, like, you should be betting on track and field. You're going to get your money. Like, hey, I got my, hey, I know this lane. I've been watching his social media. His start's been looking pretty good. I'm going to put my money on lane six. No, I think lane four is going to do it. You don't know. But at that moment, you're gonna everyone's going to tune into that meet. And they're going to watch it. And it's literally within less than 10 seconds. <laughs> and, like, you can have your top do a whole parlay. Your top three is, like, what's going to play so much. And I feel like which I can feel is so unpredictable, which makes the beauty, like, so beautiful. Because it doesn't matter what you did the day before or a couple hours in the prelims. What are you going to do in the finals? And I love that about the sport. And I feel like there's so many opportunities that track and field can grow and be exposed to so much of the world. But I think that we're holding it, we're getting held back and we're holding ourselves back as well. Because you gotta be okay with sharing your story to the world and getting a little vulnerable and that's okay. Because you don't understand how many people you're inspiring. And so I did my little McDonald's talk. <laughs> I think, you know, my simple story working at McDonald's, didn't think anything about it and it inspired so many people. And I really think if you have a story, we all have a story. Don't hesitate to put it out there because so it only takes one person. If you inspire one person, then you did your job. And I think track and field, there's so many stories that a lot of people need to grasp. And they will love the sport. They will love the athlete more just than the sport. You can't force people to love track and field, but you, someone will love your story. And they'll watch it because it's you. And they will like, grow to love the sport as well because they'll understand it more. But it all started with you and your story. That's my TED talk. I dropped my mic. <laughs> there. You went, oh. Thank you. Oh, is that good? You like it? Oh my God. Any more takes? Anything you need? I don't, I'm like taking a bath. Oh my God. Like the best Th interview Thank you.